Okay, what we're doing today is we're going to check the, the rear blower, auxiliary blower motor operation in a 2013 Buick Enclave. And what I've got right now is I've got my red and black leads of my multimeter hooked up to the wires going into the blower speed controller. It's the red with the white stripe and a black wire, the two large wires down at the bottom. And you can see um, key on or key off. The voltage is nominal volt battery voltage right now is 12.3 volts which means that we've got at least under a no load condition we've got nominal battery voltage power and ground at the blower speed controller now we're going to turn the um, ignition on and see what if any what if anything changes Okay, the ignition is on now, and we've got a 12.09 voltage, which means it's dropped just a hair, but not enough to really cause any worry. If the blower speed, if the blower wasn't turning as fast as we thought it should be with the command, the full command on, and we were seeing a lower than expected voltage on the main power and ground going into the blower speed controller, then you have to suspect those circuits. Um, but that's not the issue we're having. We're, we're having a problem with sometimes the blower works, sometimes it doesn't. And I, I've already figured out what's wrong with this thing. And, and I've, I've actually partially installed a replacement blower motor because that, that was the problem. And I just mainly did that so we can get to the wiring easier so I can show you how we actually have to test everything. We're back here to the basic power and ground going to the blower speed controller. Those are ground input and power input. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the red lead of the multimeter and switch it around to the green wire on the back side of that connector. And that's going to be the control wire from the control panels. Okay, what we got here is like I said, the red wire is in, in the green control wire. The black wires, black lead is in the on the black ground wire. We have rear blower selected to the highest blower speed and we have 2.6 volts. We're going to go down one notch and see what the voltage is. Coming down one notch, we've got 5.33 volts. Coming down another notch, which would be blow, rear blower speed number two, is um, 7.22 volts. We are now at rear blower control speed one, and we have 8.7 volts. And at rear blower speed control set to off, we have 12.05 volts. So we know that we're getting a proper signal from the control panel back to the blower speed controller. Now we have to move on in the, in the diagnosis to see what's wrong. Now I just wanted to point out that the red wire with the white stripe in the upper gray connector is also battery power supply. I've got the ground, the black wire still in the ground and the, the red lead up into the red and white wire in the gray connector now that goes to the blower motor and we can see that we have 12.06 volts and right now I have the blower motor disconnected so we don't get a stray voltage but we we need to know that so we know how this thing works and like I said earlier I, I'd already diagnosed this as a bad blower motor and what I've done is I've moved my red lead up to the orange wire which is the control ground going to the blower motor the the red white wire is hot all the time with the key on and we have 12 volts which means there's no ground present on that right now because I'm still using the black wire down there the black lead in the, in the black wire as my ground point I have moved the blower speed up to blower speed number one and we have a voltage reading of 8.48 volts on the ground side of the blower motor now at blower speed number two for the rear blower motor we now have a reading of 6.14 volts at blower speed number three for the rear blower we now now have a voltage of three volts or 3.1 volts and at blower at the rear blower speed set to four or the highest position we have point one nine volts which means that we have a nearly full ground on so that in a nutshell is how you diagnose a bad blower motor on a 2013 enclave and um in just a second i'm going to show you what i had found 
and the evidence that I saw that um, confirms this problem. L l right now, let me go turn this blower speed blower off so we can hear each other. Like I said earlier, um, I had already diagnosed as having a bad blower motor. I was in the process of doing my testing, and all I did was I I had the 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 wiring all still connected up and the blower speed on high and I wiggled this plug a little bit and it came on. Typically that's a sign of the brushes being wore out so I'm going to open it up and see if the brushes were wore and I saw something a little bit different when I took the cover off. Now, which there's some clips around the side that have to be released. You got to use a little screwdriver to lift them up or depress them in and then you pull this whole cap off. But if you look at these two connectors, let me see if I can get in here and see what I'm doing. This one here looks nice and clean, got a nice coppery wire. This one over here, this part of it looks pretty clean, but this wire is gray. And if you look back, it's discolored and has a, a it's actually burnt the, um, the surface of it off. It's got an oxide on it. And you can see the, the color of the wire going around in the choke coil is a nice coppery color. That's with the, the insulation on it, the, the, um, the varnish. But like I said, if you look at that one top little strand right there, you can tell that the varnish has been burnt off right there at the end and is discolored. So the, the actual diagnosis was there's a poor crimp in this connector right here. Um, an enterprising fellow could probably separate this out and clean it up real well, recrimp it, and possibly either spot weld it or solder it back in place. If you were to solder it, it would work for a limited amount of time and, and may work for quite a while. But solder is generally a poor conductor of electricity, uh, particularly of any load. So it it wouldn't do a lot of good in the long run and we're trying to make a guaranteed repair here. So what we're going to do is just stick a new blower motor in it. And it, it would, it would take quite an effort to get this thing apart, spot welded and put it back together. And you'd have to have a you know spot welder of the appropriate size and everything. Um, one other interesting thing about this and one, and one of the reasons why I wanted to look at the br brushes, and you can see the brush right in there and, and the brush spring. It looks to me like it's pretty long and it hasn't been used up too much. The, the commutator ring looks nice and clean. No bad spots in it or anything like that. No heavy grooving. Oops. No heavy grooving. And the reason why I wanted to look at it real close was you know if it was the brushes were wore out you would see air gaps between the brush and the commutator and if the commutator was wore out it would be gouged out and have burnt about black spots and all that kind of stuff but an interesting thing that happens to these vehicles and i don't know why gm doesn't know better than this they it's not their first rodeo but there's a problem with these blower motors blowing brush dust onto the evaporators and then the evaporator cores be between the brush dust and the type of metal that's on it to protect it laying on the aluminum evaporator core and having moisture in the area from um, condensation it actually attacks the aluminum and, and shoots um, creates pinholes in the evaporator core so i was concerned about that for the customer that there might be a lot of brush dust on the evaporator core and this motor really and truly, as far as brush wear, looks fairly new. The vehicle's got 143,000 on it, and I doubt that they were ever really using the rear blower that much. Um, the, the bulk of the problem, well, not the bulk of the problem. The only problem with this blower motor was a poor connection right there, that, that crimp or spot weld. But anyways, we're putting a new blower motor in here. And there I have it hanging in the hole. I'm gonna slip it right out real quick so we can look at it because it is an aftermarket design and it looks a little bit different, but I wanna show you that it does actually fit and work and all that good stuff. And this is a look at the two blower motors side by side and you can tell there's an obvious difference. The one, difference, the one on the right hand side has two wires and a plug coming out. 
the one on the left hand side the original has a plug built into it so it's a little bit neater assembly they both have the air duct that keeps the blower motor cool coming up from the blower case and the OE one just has a, a more refined professional look to it the other one doesn't look nearly as good but it does work and a, a disadvantage to buying a replacement in um, the OE for this one is depending on the the year model the build date all that kind of stuff this one is just a tad bit cheaper but then they force you to buy a new plug because they change the plug design and you save like twenty dollars between this one and this blower motor but the plug costs an extra 50 or 60 bucks so you wind up spending more in the long run and you know me personally i would rather have oe but this is a used car you know the whole story that goes along with that we got to save money and this one will work perfectly fine for the customer for quite a long time in fact it'll probably last as long as the original would um well, like I said, it, it just looks a little bit cheaper. And when you when you first glance at it, you also think that the, the blower impeller is slightly bigger on the new one. And it may be, but the fins are going in the right directions. And it fits the hole and it blows air and relatively quiet and all that good stuff. So we're going to go with it. And we're just, just going to slide it in the hole. Get it oriented correctly with that air duct and the and the bolt holes. We're gonna get one of the screws started, and if you ever watch me, I always turn, stick it in, turn to the left until you feel a click, and then you turn back to the right. And we do that so we don't cut new threads every time and wind up with a stripped out hole. If you turn it to the left that one time and make it click. That means you've started in the original thread cut and you don't have to cut new threads. And seeing how that blower case is quite expensive, we don't want to do that. And again, we stick it in there, turn it in until it clicks. And then tighten it down. harder to see back here just felt the click no I thought I felt the click there we go Now we've got all three blower screws in there and we're going to plug the plug up. Now an issue that we have is we need to connect this connector right there so it doesn't flop around. There, there's actually a hole right there to snap it into. I just got to go see if I can find a slide connector with a pin in there. We might have to get a wire tie with a, with a Christmas tree connector. But I'll be back in a minute after I find something for that. Okay, going back to the problem that I was trying to tackle We've got a, um, a perch right here for a clip to go into and a hole right there for it to snap into to hold this wire in place. There's several ways you can do it. You can take electrical tape and wrap around it, secure it so it doesn't rattle. You can use a plain wire tie and it would do the trick. You can do a wire tie that has a Christmas tree push pin connector on it, which is the next best thing. But luckily, I went and found one of these in one of my junk drawers. You always keep things like this around, so we're going to slide it right in here.
and it clicks and locks. And we are going to we are going to be upset. We're going to be upset because this one is supposed to lock in that. And this one has nowhere to go. Well, that sucks. Well, 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 ain't that something? went through all that effort for not so I'm going to take my little clip pin off I will save that for another vehicle and we're gonna to have to come in here and get this thing secured somehow okay I seem to have gone a little bit crazy and overboard to, to take care of this um, I want to secure this thing down in my style so I went ahead and found a bracket that was pretty close to being right. I had to drill a hole back here, use that clip, re clip retainer that I found a little while ago, and I'm going to snap it all in place, and it'll be a perfectly fine secured wire. And it won't rattle and carry on and all that kind of good stuff. But there again, I don't expect you to have this kind of stuff laying around unless you're another shop. Um, and then if you are in another shop, you need to do the best you can to secure everything properly. But like I said earlier, you can wrap it with some tape. You could secure it to the other wiring harness with a wire tie. And I would at times recommend, um, because if, if you couldn't secure this really well, you might want to wrap it with some foam tape. Um, because if it gets to wrap bouncing around, it won't actually knock and make a noise that somebody has to go looking for. Um, the only problem with putting foam around something like that is if you've got any kind of heat build up at all um, in a connector and you tend to have it with a higher amperage um, circuit like a blower motor but if you have heat building up at all if you wrap it with foam it's going to be an insulator and it's going to make it get hotter and hotter and it will eventually fail but anyways the blower motor is installed the wires are secured they're routed properly everything's looking good um, Yep, got to tuck that back in there. Everything's riding good there. So we should be good to go. Oh, and one last thing. The, the instruction manuals and everything tell you that you have to pull the entire back seat out and you have to pull the side panels loose and, you know, all this kind of stuff. You really don't have to do that. Um, you do have to take this separator panel out. Um, it's just a, a cover for... The, me the hinge mechanism on the rear seat and it's a, a place to latch a cover into the that cover right there that sits in the front edge of this slot you have to take all that out of the way lift up the the rear threshold and then you can um, pull this top panel out and then you can snap this out and and work in between it so you don't really have to take everything completely apart there's plenty of room to work in there and that should hopefully also save you some time until next time, this is Sparky. Okay, a few other things that you need to know in the process of taking this apart and putting it back together. When this panel goes back on, you have to make sure this clip goes in the hole and snaps in. You have to make sure that you drag this gasket back on the outside of this panel all the way around so it doesn't get stuck underneath it. You have two screws here. They are Torx 40s or T40 um, bit is needed to take them in and out. This panel up here, you have to slide this under the headliner. You get that clip and these other clips attached, semi-attached into the um, these slots. And I've got to take this out and put it back in that cover. And you also have a screw with a seven millimeter head right there under that cover. See about getting that stuff back in there. So, like I said, that clip there had to go under the headliner. You had to line up all the clips that go into these panels and snap them in place, and then put the screw in. Of course, the reverse to take it apart. And we're going to have to put this back in place, and that goes in with 13 millimeter screw headed screws.
and we'll be back in a minute well, like i said you got bolts that go down through this they got 13 millimeter heads and there are three of them and the last two panels just snap in place and we'll be to those in just a second got to rearrange stuff this panel just snaps back in the only trick to it is you have to again work with this gasket and make sure you bring it to the top side before you get it completely down here now that's all down and the gasket's in place there are hinges right there that snap push down and roll in and like that and then we're good to go boy that looks terrible don't it well that's somebody else's job not mine well there we go we've diagnosed fixed and replaced everything in this 2013 buick enclave now the last thing to do is go for a test drive and i'll do that probably another couple hours when it's good and hot